All right, here we go. This is a tough one only because it's the genealogy. And I don't, you know, I, as I was looking at this, I was thinking, you know, a person could probably spend weeks going through each person in the Old Testament and all that, but that's not what this Bible says about. It's about, it's about Luke and, and moving on through Luke. Anyway, we're start, we're start, I'm going to start in tw uh, thir uh, verse 21. It's really 22, but it's good to have 21 in there. It's Jesus' baptism. It says, so Jesus is, comes to John. He said, not only were all the people immersed into this prophetic, symbolic baptism. Say, I was immersed into a prophetic baptism. When Jesus was baptized, I was baptized. I think the first time I ever heard that was John Crowder. But when he was baptized, he was baptized for us as us. Right. So we were it says immersed in this prophetic symbolic baptism, pointing to the death and resurrection event, which is a future event from this point, about three years. But to crown it all in the most significant and conclusive way, Jesus himself was baptized. While Jesus was overwhelmed in prayer, the heavens opened. Of course, we always think of heavens as up, but in, maybe it is. Verse 32, and here in this open heavenly dimension. In other words, think about heavenly dimension as being another dimension that we can't see with our visible eyes. Who knows if it's up there right here? Because he says the kingdom is where? In us and all around us. So it's a different dimension. And remember the word for uh, spirit is pneumo, which means air. Right now, you there's air all around you. There's air in you. You can't. You know, if you go like this, you can feel the air, can't you? If the wind blows, you can feel the air. And he talks about the John the third chapter. You know, where does it come from? Where is it going, the wind? But we, we can see its effects. All of a sudden, whoo, there's a hurricane. And, you know, the palm trees are the sideways. and Or, you know, it's a gentle breeze off the ocean. Or it's a nice, you know, whatever. There's no wind. But anyway, so in other words, the heavenly dimension opens up. It says the Holy Spirit alight, alighted upon Jesus in what visible form? In other words, a spirit entity becomes visible like a dove. And just think about that. Just think of the image. We, you know, we've read this many times, many of you. So you have that image already. And the father's voice was clearly heard. My son, you are my beloved one. In you rests my glorious delight. And actually, he's saying the same thing to you, by the way. He says, you are his son. There's no male or female and say, I am his beloved one, and I am his glorious delight. You go back to, you know, the shepherds, and it said, and the angels, remember the uh, angel showed up to the shepherds, and then all of a sudden the angel showed up, glory to God the highest, and peace to his people on earth, in whom he is well pleased. Say, he is well pleased with me. I am not my actions, or I am what God says and believes about me. I am not my actions. I am what God believes to be true about me. That's putting on the mind of Christ. I said it many times, is believing what God believes in spite of the contradictions in our life. And then a commentary. So you are my son. Today I've begotten you. And he talks about the uh, Mesoretic text, which is the, the Old Testament that we have in our Bibles, but the Septuagint is, is older than that. And and he's saying, it says servant, but in the old, in the Septuagint, he says son. You know, sometimes I, I believe Francois is also, you know, he's he's doing things and he's going through this and he's kind of explaining himself to people that say, well, that, that can't be true because it says this and this. Well, he says this and this is why. Anyway, here we go. 33, Jesus was approaching his 30th birthday. I love approaching. <clears throat> when he began his ministry, it was a general opinion that he was the son of Joseph. Why wouldn't he be? Jesus' grandfather from his mother's side was Eli, Joseph's father-in-law. Now, in Matthew, we have a genealogy through Joseph, back to David, back to Adam. Because remember, he's the son of David. Well, guess who else is in the genealogy of David? It's Mary, and this is Mary's genealogy. So you have, to, in the four... Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I know the church I grew up in said that was the Gospels, but I think it's all the Gospel. But in those four books, you have three of them have genealogies. Mark does not have a genealogy. Matthew has the one back through Joseph's line, back to David, through Solomon, right? 
This one has it back to Mary. And then John, of course, does his supernatural one. In the beginning was the word. He skips all the flesh. He goes right back to the beginning. So what I how I'm approaching this today is I'm just going to talk about, I'm going to go through their what their names mean. And think about this. This is a line from Adam all the way down to David, all the way down to through Mary to Jesus. And many of these names are like symbolism or prophetic names, in a sense, pointing to the seed. Think how brilliant God is to get this done. I mean, I, I can't correlate every name here, and there's a couple of them that don't even really have a name. But think how brilliant God is that there is something in a name. I was thinking about that today. And, and I've said this, the Native Americans, you know, we have Indian tribes in North Dakota, South Dakota, and a lot of the, a lot of the natives are named like Bill Red Cow. Or we had this one guy named Billy J Billy J Billy Joe Wounded Face or something back where I where I was from. I never met the guy, but he was he was in a reservation. But but they were they had a name that meant something. We all have like Patrick or Teresa or Lucy, and we don't even know what our names mean. So I just thought I'd look up my name. And just think about it. my name, Patrick, means nobleman or of noble origin, which I am. Right? I'm of noble origin. So are you, by the way. But think about this. So if I walked up, if someone was saying my name literally, they say, hey, nobleman, what are you doing today? Hey, you of noble origin. See, so there's something in a name, isn't there? So, like I said, I'm not going back. I could probably could do a study on a lot of these people because they have you know, pretty interesting life events, but that's not the point of what I'm, what I want to get through this. I, I want messages that change our life. That's what we're after. I, we can do history all day long and history is wonderful, but we're after a message. We're after the word, the rhema, the spoken word and the logos, which is the, which is the logic of God, which is Christ. Because that's what changes the truth. That's what I'm always after is the truth and wisdom. Okay. So it says, from his father Eli, Joseph's father. This was the age when the priests, this is commentary, right? 23. This is the age when the priests and the Levites began to service in the temple. And Yah and Yosef, or Joseph, means Yahweh has added. Think about these names now. Yahweh has added. He's added a savior, hasn't he? Next is Eli, elevation to raise above or ascension. Christ is the elevation. Now, think about this. So, if Eli was coming down the road, he'd say, we'd say, hey, elevation. In fact, it's funny because we were on a, we were with Francois, and we have a, a friend who's from Singapore, and his word for all of us was elevation. Elevation. But so, Eli's name is elevation. And then, and then it goes on. Uh, let's see, where are we here? Okay. So, in that, verse 24. So I kind of want to say their names and then what they mean. And you think about the string of names. It says here, Eli was a son of Mattiatha, or Matt Mattathiah, gift of Yahweh, or joined in harmony. Whoa. Who's the gift of Yahweh? We just celebrated the gift of Yahweh. And I was telling the little kids at Jesse's house, you know, Christ is the gift. And when we open that package, it keeps on giving and giving and giving and you discover more treasures and more wisdom, it just doesn't end. That's why this is so much fun. It goes on and on. Melky, my king. I mean, think about this. This is the ancestry of Jesus. Pointing to him, these names mean something. They would call Melky, they say, my king, that's what it means. Jana, Yahweh's seed, flourishing. Christ is Yahweh's seed, flourishing. As Isaiah 53 says, there's a little seed, a little sprout out of what? Out of dry ground. Israel was dry ground. There was no life. And here comes the seed, a little seed that bears fruit out of dry ground. That's Christ. All right, 25. Son of Matthias. That, that name must have been, oh, I did that. No, gift of Yahweh. Amos. Strength, mental alert, courageous, and brave. And that's exactly how Jesus walked. Nahum, comfort. Remember the Holy Spirit's the comfort. You got the Trinity here. From Noah, rest. Remember, it says Jesus is what? Lord of the Sabbath. 
He is the Lord to rest. We rest in his finished work. That's what the Sabbath means. It doesn't mean a day. It means a lifestyle. Understanding he accomplished everything for us. The work is finished in him. The name Islai, and I'm just going to go down to, it says, like the Arabic probably means to join, thus jo a joint or joining, which was which is kind of the word for peace in a sense, a dovetail joint. The, the son of Nogog, brightness or illumination, illuminating morning. Christ is the bright, you know, bright morning sun, right? He's the son, son of uh, Mat, small. That one I couldn't come up with anything. And then we're at Matiatha. Must have been, must have been the God getting in there. They must have loved that name, but they want to continue. Hey, the gift of God is coming. The gift of Yahweh is showing up. Son of Shimi, renowned. Christ is renowned, isn't he? Son of Joseph, Yahweh is added. And Judah, which is, you know, really means praise, right? Raising the hands and praise and thanksgiving and celebration. Isn't that what we do to Christ? Isn't he the praise and celebration of our lives? And aren't these names interesting? Because they, they would call Joseph, oh, hey, Yahweh is added. You know, we're so used to these names that don't, you know, we... We're named and label. It's almost like a label, but we forget what the, your name means. Something, and if we actually use the name, we go, "Oh, maybe that maybe it's more of an impact than you know just naming your kid." Like, wow, I'm gonna name him after a. I've heard some gal say, "I name my child after a, what is it, a daytime soap opera woman." I'm like, well, whatever. But you know what? We pick a name we think is beautiful. We don't even know the name. Some some. Some guy that I knew came in and he named his kids Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I thought to myself, you know, he was a, a believer too. And I thought, you just named your three kids after Babylonian gods. Because that wasn't, that wasn't their original name. They had really beautiful original names. That, that was the renaming Nebuchadnezzar that renamed him. Okay, son of Yochanan, which means grace gift of God. Christ is the favor gift of God. Son of Risa which means the header of the prince, and he is the head. Zerubbabel, which remember, he's the king. He was sown in Babylon, it means. And he was the one, he led the Jews back from Babylon in 520 B.C. and governed Judah, and he did what? Rebuilt the temple. Who else rebuilt the temple? He says, I will tear it down in three days. We died with him, and we've been raised with him already. And that's everybody. They just don't haven't had the revelation of it. All right. And son of Sheltiel, which is I have asked God. Think about this. That's these are their names. Melki, son of Melki, my king, son of Adai, an adornment for te for testimony to one's position or rank. Son of Kosan, king's lips as an oracle, prophetic. Son of Elmadon, which root means means beginnings, or down here in the air, so down at the bottom it says measured in Elohim. Son of Air, awakened or watchful. Son of Josi, sustained of Yahweh. Was Christ sustained of Yahweh? Yes, he was. Are we sustained of Yahweh? Yeah. Eleazar, God is our help. He's our help in Christ. Yoram, whom Yahweh has exalted. He's exalted Christ, and he's exalted you in Christ. Matat, the gift of God. Levi, I love this, joined in harmony again. We've been joined in harmony. That's peace. We're in union with Christ, and it wasn't even our idea. It was his. And it wasn't our effort. It was his. He did that without your permission. You just come to realize what he's done son of simeon which is heard we remember we read about simeon uh, in the temple with the baby jesus it's one who hears christ is one who hears son of ben judah ben means son of ben means son son of judah son of salvation and praise son of yosef meaning yahweh has added son of yonanan yahweh is a gracious giver Yahweh is a gracious giver. I was talking to the kids this week a little bit. You know, everybody's excited about presents. 
I was excited about presents too. If you listen to this recording later, we just came out of Christmas. So just just for time's sake. And I was telling him, isn't it interesting? But Christ says it's in giving that you receive. You want to receive, give. Not just money. Just give love. Give your time. Whatever, however God leads you and you will get, 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 get. God will keep pouring it into you and you can be giving it out. Uh, son of Elikim, which is my God raises up or he resurrects. There comes he resurrects down the street, prophetic of the seed that was coming through their line. See, now think about this. This is these are the line of names that are little prophetic little names all the way through pointing to the seed. That's the beauty of this. Yes, it's the line to David, so that we know that through Mary and through Joseph, they both go to David. He is the son of David. But these names are prophetic, and they mean something, pointing to, you know, remember the Old Testament is always pointing to who? Christ, and in Christ it's all fulfilled. All right, son of Melia, something fulfilled. That is abundance of produce, first of ripe fruit, fulfillness, and he is the first fruits. Son of manna, Susain, seeing the future in the seed, watching over something important. In other words, they're watching and waiting. For the seed to appear. Hey, it was prophesied first thing in the Bible when Adam fell. That he will, cru you know, you will crush his heel and he will crush your head. There's a prophecy of Messiah coming instantly. Instantly. Adam, in the seed, all the nations will be blessed. They're waiting for this Messiah. They waited a long time. They're still waiting for many of them. They missed him. Son of Matiatha, gift of God. Gift of Yahweh, son of Nathan. This is where this is David's offspring. Nathan means giver of gifts. Is Jesus the giver of gifts? Is he's the gift that keeps on giving? Son of David, the beloved. Okay, and it says here, I wanted to read Second Samuel. He posts that in the commentary. Seven, eleven through thirteen. The Lord declares to you, he's talking to David, that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I love that, lie down with your fathers. In other words, you're going to be hanging out with your fathers after you die. You're not dying. You're giving up the earth suit. I will raise up your offspring after you. Notice it's singular. You shall come forth from, he shall come forth from your body, Mary and Joseph, and I will establish his kingdom, and he shall build a house for my, my name, and I will establish that, establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And that house is you. Say, I am his house. I am his temple. Say, I am his resting place. I'm his resting place. I'm resting in him, and he's actually dwelling and resting in me. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Your throne shall be established forever. In other words, then Francois comments in the, in the mirror here. No wonder David named one of his sons after the prophet. Nathan. And the very one Luke connects Jesus with via Mary's lineage, Nathan. Cool, huh? Pretty interesting. All right. I hope I'm trying to make this as interesting as possible. Like I said, this is a tough one. You know, just doing a, a lineage. I was every people always tell me, I'm gonna read the Bible. I'm gonna start from the beginning. I said, Oh, that works to so get the numbers, and then watch out. <laughs> And they start listing all those names. My Lord. I usually discourage that when people tell me that. But, you know, people are people. are going to do what they're going to do. All right. 32, son of Jesse, which means Yahweh is my husband. There's more. There's a lot of good stuff in there. We studied this lot before, but I just don't have time to go through it all. And son of Obed, bondservant. Son of Boaz. Fleetness and strength and sharp mind. Remember, Boaz married Ruth, the Moabite women. So you have some, you have some foreigners in there, not just straight Jewish blood. Son of Salmon, garment. He's the garment of praise. We're wrapped in his garment. We've been clothed with Christ. I love this. Son of Nakshon, named after the bronze servant serpent Moses made, pointing to Messiah's redeemer. What does it say here? 
chapter 14. Remember how Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man will be lifted up. Here's This is prophetic of what the Son of Man is going to be, what Christ is. He even brings it back. He says, he's named after the serpent, or the bronze serpent Moses made and pointed to the Messiah Redeemer. It says, I be lifted up. Well, he, I'm going to be lifted up. Even so the Son of Man will be lifted up on a pole, and he was. All right. Son of Aminadad which means my people, son of Aram, Aram which means elevate, elevated on high. See that, I mean, I hope you're seeing all the kind of pointing to the gospel, pointing to the prophetic, pointing to the Messiah, pointing to the accomplishments of what Christ is going to do. All in these names that are coming down, bing, 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 all the way from Adam, all the way to David, all the way down here. Son of Aram, the son of Hezram, to enclose, also means to nourish, surrounded by the wall. In other words, Christ is the protection. He's also, we nourish him. He's the milk of the, the word, the word righteous. I love that, you know, back in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, you know, here, I used to hear all kinds of people, this is really the meat of the word. The meat of the word is the simplicity of a righteousness by faith. That's what it is. It's a simple gospel. We, you know, you can read it and get it really complicated. It's a simple message, very simple. And don't complicate it. It's just not worth your time. Keep it simple. All right. Name. Uh, son of Perez, which mean, which is, remember, that's uh, Judah's son, I believe, right? Yeah. Verse 38. When the time of his of her delivery came, there were twins in her womb. And when she was in labor, one put out his hand, and the midwife took and bound on his hand a scarlet thread saying this came out first but as he drew back his hand behold the brother came out and said what what a breach you have made for yourself therefore they name his name perez in other words he looked like he's coming out second but he came in first the son of judah and then judah of course is praise judah which pictures the hands thrown up in praise and gratitude and celebration and that does that point to the messiah we're waiting to praise we're waiting for the celebration and Christ is our celebration. And, you know, we just we just kind of, you know, I was thinking about Christmas again. Because, you know, I, things come on. In the old ancient days, they have Passover. And, you know, I, I'm the grandfather now. so You know, and the, the oldest tells the story. Why did they tell the story of the Passover? To remind the kids what happened. And why do we tell the story of Christmas? To remind people what happened. Why do we, actually, the more important holiday, honestly, is Easter. And that's why do we tell the story? That's our Christian Passover in a sense. It is because he's the Passover lamb and we tell the story. to So kids learn it so that uh, the generations below us learn the story. What happened? Why are we, why do we believe like we believe? It's very important. All right. Son of Jacob means heel holder. Son of, and this is my favorite. Remember the first, the promise here. Son of Isaac, oh, laughter. Let's just hold on to that one for a second. Abraham, I'm going to give you a son, supernaturally born, and call his name Laughter. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. If you want to demonstrate the kingdom, just walk and understanding that you're in oneness with God and that peace, knowing that you're righteous, and letting God just pour forth that joy out of you. That is the kingdom of God, and it's attractive. It's not condemning, by the way. It's upbuilding. It's good news. All right. Son of Abraham, which means father or head. Son of Terah, which I think this is interesting. If I can find it. He was the father from above. He was father from above. His name means, Ab I think his name, I think this means that Abraham was fathered from above because he was older when he, which is the explanation here. But anyway, I'll, you can read that further. So we're past Abraham now. Moving on to old Adam. Son of Surug, which in the Hebrew means to be intertwined, to be weaved. Think about this. You are intertwined with God. You're, we're all in the great tapestry, and Christ is holding us all together. He's intertwining us with him and with each other. We've been intertwined. We're not going to be. We are. We just wake up to like what? This is the same thing. We just wake up to what God has already accomplished. Son of Rule, which is friend. Son of Pelak, which is family clan. Sam, part of the family. 
you, you can't be part of the family. You know, so he's adopted. That adopted means revealed. We've been adopted. No, it's a bad word. I mean, it's not the word. That's really the word. It's we've been revealed as children. You didn't know you were a child. Now you know. Son of Eber, region beyond, which would be the heavenly dimension. Son of Shalak, which is sprout. The sprouts of a plant sent out. Christ is the sprout. Son of Canaan. Now, there really wasn't an explanation for this as I read it, but I'll just read. With a picture of the sun at the horizon and the gathering, outstretched hands of light. This is a picture of a continuance in the sea, the building of the nest and the family, the foundation of the community. So the building of a nest, a dwelling, and a family, the foundation of Christ came to build a community, a foundation, and we are his home individually and collectively. Son of Shem, meaning name or renown. There is a, uh, a museum over the, the what is it, the? Yad Vashem, which is the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. Yad it means hand, and Shem means name. Hand the name. It might mean renowned, though, but that's that's what it means. Son Shem, son of Noach, which means found favor. Son of Lechem, uh, Lemach, which means the Arabic means strong and robust young man. Remember, we just read that he be, with Jesus was, after he was come back from the temple at twelve, he became a strong and vigorous boy and and full of wisdom. Son of Meth, uh, Methuselah. And that says a lot there. He's the oldest man, but doesn't really say his name that I could find anyway. Son of Enoch, which means inaugurate, train, or dedicate. And we know that he was caught up. He lived 365 years, one year for every day. And then he, he ascended, right? We'd all like to be. And that's, of course, that is, that is a prophetic of the ascension that Christ was going to do. He died, was raised, and he ascended into the heavenly realm the uh, up, or I don't know, who knows. Son of Enoch, which means laying a mental hold on the door of the horizon. Son of Mah Mahalalel, which means to shine like the stars, to cheer with great excitement, letting it rip to be raving mad. And aren't you say, I am raving mad for the King of Kings. I'm raving mad for, for the good news. I was telling somebody the other day, I am so addicted, it's unbelievable. I mean, I to shoot myself up with the gospel every day if I can. I put my time to do it. Son of Canaan, which with the picture of the sun and the horizon and the gathering. That's all I got out of that one. Son of Enos, which in Anish is using the verb Aramaic. Means, Yanish means gift of God. I love the son of Set or Seth. Resurrection of that which was lost in death. And then remember, and he came from Eve. Resurrection of that which was lost in death. Seth was the third son of Adam and Eve. Eve considered him to be the, a resurrection of her dead son. And it goes into, remember, he was he was declared righteous because of his gift and Cain and and uh, Abel what or Abel Cain wasn't. And then of course he, he goes to one John and compares the Cain to the Pharisees and Jesus to to Abel. You know, they kill they killed killed the killed Christ. And here's a prophetic thing. We're already there at the beginning. Son of Adam, product of likeness and made from soil. Son of God, or the plural form, plural form Elohim, which is Father, Son, Spirit. Son of Elohim, Father, Son, Spirit. So, the end.